dropper and tips. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to talk about three different ways to attach a tag dropper. Uh, we all like to fish a second fly once in a while. And instead of coming off of the bend of that first fly, instead of trailing the second fly, I like to attach it by way of a tag. But just as important is how we attach that tag, how we create the tag on the line. Uh, there are three good ways to do it. Let me show you all three. so I'm not going to get into why I choose tag droppers over trailers usually uh, because I've covered all of that and I've written articles about that on trout pitting and there's a good one that I'll leave a link to right up here. Uh, if you do choose tags for your, for your dropper, um, there are three good ways to do it and each one of them really has its moment. All right, so let me mention, I'm going to use thicker and brighter line than you normally would just so you can see it. Of course, this rigging would happen in your tippet section. I'm going to use this green line for your main line. This is the line that's coming, this is your leader. This is coming down off of your leader. Um, and the pink line I'll use for creating tags. And I'll, I'll keep it the same all the way through uh, all three versions of creating a tag. All right, so this first one I'd call the splice. Uh, it's definitely the most popular. It's the most commonly used. It's definitely the one I use the most. I have two lines. I have the main line, then I have my added in line. And I want to join them and create a tag right here. I have my main line here, and I want to add in another line. Um, and I want to create this tag by adding in this line. I've got a nice tag length here. All right. Here's my point fly, it's going to be over there. Now, I'm going to use an Orvis tippet knot. You could use a double surgeon's, but I really prefer an Orvis tippet knot right here because I can use the added in length to create my tag. Now, here's what we have. Instead of looking like this with the tag pointed down, the Orvis tippet knot allows me to use the added in line and have the tag pointing up which does keep things from tangling a little bit more. If you try to use that added in line with a double surgeon's knot, that'll break. So joining these two lines together, that's the splice. All right, so the second method I call the layover. The guys kind of make fun of me because I, I like to have a name for everything, but it's good. So Austin showed me this. Austin Dando showed me this method uh, maybe only five or six years ago. And I have to admit, I was a little embarrassed that I I'd never seen it or even thought about it myself. Um, I call it the layover because here's the main line and now I'm just gonna lay a piece of line over where I want it and that's gonna create my tag. All right, so I use this layover method when I don't wanna break in the line. I don't wanna splice it in. Uh, I have, I don't want my main line maybe to be any shorter than it is. I just take the new line and lay it in, lay it in right where I want it, right onto the main line. Now I could use a double surgeons, but I'm gonna once again use an Orvis tippet knot here. You can go online and find tutorials for all these knots. I'm not really trying to show you how to tie the Orvis tippet knot or the double surgeons, but there it is, right there. It's real important, of course, to pull on all your tags, especially in this thicker line. So once again, I have the tag created by that pink line and there's no break in the green line. In, the, in my main line, there's no break. That's a great way to do it. When I want to save material, I want to save the length, perhaps, of my main line, even just by a few inches, that kind of stuff matters. It's also arguably stronger than the splice. And once again, because I use the Orvis tippet knot, I get that up tag. Instead of the double surgeon's knot, which would look like a down tag. So another good time to use this layover method is when I want a real strong main line. Let's say 4X or even 3X for my main line. Maybe I want my tags or my tag to my flies 6X. It's something to think about. All right, so that was the layover. And let's clip this tag off. And the next method I call an add-on line. There. So let's say there's a knot in the line. Maybe my tag got short and I had to clip it off or I clipped it off because I didn't want it there. Let's say there's a knot in the line and boy, I wish there was a tag there. 
So let's create one. Uh, I'm going to use the uni knot to create, well, barrel, a barrel knot that goes around the main line four or five times, six times, whatever. Now it's, a, it's around there, but I haven't tightened it down yet because I'm going to slide it into position. Pull, now pull it tight and I'm good. Now I need to clip the tag off and let me point something out here. With this add-on line, with this uni knot, I, I need to use the tag that points down. So instead of having this, like we did with the uh, Orvis tippet knot, with this uni knot, you need to use the tag that points down. And that's all right. Now the reason I use the uni knot for this is because you have one, two, three, four, five wraps around that main line instead of, well, if you just use the clinch knot. And I used to do that, but it would break too often. If, the clin if you want a clinch or a Davy knot or something around the main line, you would only have one wrap around that main line. And then if it slides up and down a little bit, um, you'll break off. Uh, with this uni knot, you have four, five, six wraps around. It's much, much stronger. And when you tighten this up, it doesn't slide anyway. All right, so those are my three favorite ways. I should mention loop droppers. Uh, definitely another way to do it. It's not my favorite. I feel like loop droppers are kind of clunky and it just they take more time to set up than what I just showed you anyway. Not my favorite. How do you feel about loop droppers? I think they suck. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. That's uh, three ways to attach a dropper. The splice method, the layover method, and the add-on line. And I think just by seeing and understanding and practicing each of them, uh, you'll find uses for them on the water. So I hope that helps you out. Fish hard, friends, and thanks to my buddy Josh Darling behind the camera. Don't create things, Dominic. Just hey, this is trout bit and tips. Oh man, that was the good that one too. One. I could feel it.